I wanted to oppress myself. I wanted to see how much my waist could shrink via waist shaper alone. I like to think of myself as a little bit of a mad scientist. Just trying to get by on experiments alone. No formal instruction here. And also, I saw a bunch of Barry Mugler corsets and just thought, they're so hot. So I commenced with draping where I made as many unnecessary seams as possible to make it look vintage and like it was difficult to do instead of one of those, you know, typical bodice, bridal, bustiers that you see on Pinterest. The last thing I want is to look any bit matrimonial. And then I started work on the very first mock-up, which went deceptively well, actually. Let me know in the comments if I did a bad job already on the first fitting. I like already where the point sits towards the arm rather than towards the front. Take out some ease here, just so it'll fit more snugly around the bust. So I'll redraw that and adjust the curve. I think I'm gonna add maybe a centimeter or two here towards the front piece, just so this gap doesn't look abnormally large or I need a bigger corset. Heaven forbid! I better have a small waist to begin with, right? embodied the memes wherein <laughs> you're about to go to bed and then something hits you and then you have a crisis and that was my brain last night because it thought of so many ways this could go wrong Ina look at all the other corsets in Pinterest they already have the shape built into them so you need to do a huge adjustment on your twall to get this right <sighs> It doesn't have to squeeze you, but then I thought, then what's the whole point? Maybe there's another way to get this done. But then, maybe that's why I felt so suffocated in the mock-up yesterday because I was trying to squeeze my rib cage area. I don't think bones are meant to be reshaped. You probably can, there are probably a lot of cosmetic procedures, but that's not what we're going for with corsets. <laughs> Moving on, I'm trying to be less wasteful, so I use the muslin strips that made up the mock-up as interfacing for the final product. I also steamed the fashion fabric. Can I just say, the clicking sound it makes is so satisfying. Then I started basting the two layers together with a simple running stitch. This was done on top of a tailor's hem to mimic the curves of the torso so we can get as close a fit as possible. The straighter side seams were easily machine stitched, but the curvier side seams shaping the bust area had to be blind stitched together before they could be machine stitched. It's a technique I learned while reading about vintage couture. I might have had a little fun playing with my magnetic pincushion. I got sick, I had to stop all progress, and also the layers would shift and switch, and when I tried to sew them together into the seam, there would be dimples and folds, and I had to actually create additional columns of basting vertically so that it would behave itself. I fixed my issues and pressed the seams open. Are you impressed? Repressed? Suppressed? Depressed? Why not press the subscribe button? or the like button, I'm not choosy. Then I dealt with my least favorite part of any sewing project, the removal of the basting threads. Ah, 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 the thread just won't come out, come out. Apparently for waist shapers to work, you have to make sure you put in stay tape around the waist to keep the garment from stretching out. So I cross stitched each side of the twill tape to the waist. I used the same twill tape in a zigzag pattern down the front pieces to form the loops I'll use to close the garment, stitching them down with a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch. Finally, I finished the raw edges with a bias tape. You can add a lining if you'd like, but I want it to be as cheap as humanly possible. It's boning time! I sewed the channels for the boning, mindful of the curves of the garment. And for the final reveal, let me sacrifice my poor ego with this before and after sequence. You're very welcome. <laughs>